Welcome to 9.5 day two. We're going to continue on with the completing the square method and material. So let's take a look at this new form. I don't think we've learned this yet. This equation right here is called vertex form. Y equals quantity X minus H squared plus K. This is a parabola. You can see that the degree is two. There is a little two up there. That means we will have a parabola. This picture right here is a parabola. And the vertex of this parabola is whatever numbers are in the h and the k position. So we're going to use the method of completing the square, which we talked about in day one, to find the vertex of a quadratic function in this form. So make sure you have circled this or rewritten this form right here. This is really important. The h value is the x coordinate of the vertex, and the k value is the y coordinate of the vertex. Please take note that this negative sign is built into the formula. So if you see a negative number here, that h value is actually positive. Whereas if you see a positive number, take a look down here, then that h value is actually negative because technically there is a double negative instead of a, a positive there. That's the tricky part. The easier part is the k value. If the k value is positive, then the y value is positive. If the k value is negative, then the y value is negative. So what I would suggest you do is just remember, if you see a negative here, that number is positive. And if you see a positive number here, that number is negative. Just think opposite for that value, whereas the k value is, as you see it, that's how it is. So the vertex of any parabola in this form is the hk value. Take a look at this picture real quick. This is a general parabola. Remember we talked about axis of symmetry this chapter. We also talked about the vertex. The vertex is where the parabola changes direction. So as you can see the parabola is going down, decreasing, all of a sudden it's going increasing now. So that's the vertex. It's either the minimum or maximum point of the parabola. The roots, remember we talked about this in a previous section, the roots are the numbers that the parabola crosses the x-axis. These guys are also called the x-intercepts as well as the zeros. Roots, zeros, and x-intercepts are all the same thing. And the y-intercept is always the c-value of the quadratic. So now that's a nice little review of previous sections, and we will jump into example three. And in this one, what we're asked to do is find the vertex of this given quadratic. And we have y equals x squared plus 6x plus 8. The way that we're going to find the vertex is through completing the square. So first thing I want to do is make room for the actual number that we will be completing the square with. So first, rewrite the given quadratic. That's always number one. Now we're going to make room for that number by taking that 8 and bringing it to the other side. So now we have y minus 8 equals x squared plus 6x. You can see there is a blank space right here as well as right here. So now the way that you figure out what number goes in that spot, let's go back to the jingle I referenced in the previous video. Here's the jingle. You half it, take the b term and divide by 2. You square it, take that b value, divide by 2 and square it, and you add it to both sides of the equation. You half it, you square it, and you add it to both sides. So now let's use that jingle and take the b value, which is 6, you half it, you square it, that's going to be 3 squared, which equals 9, and you add it to both sides, so plus 9 and plus 9. Now the good thing is that we can do the x method, so 9 and 6, the numbers that work are 3 and 3, x plus 3, x plus 3, we might as well combine like terms on the other side, y plus 1, y plus 1 equals, well that's x plus 3 quantity squared because there are two of those x plus 3's. Now we want to get the y by itself, so subtract the 1 to the other side, y equals x plus 3 squared minus 1. Now you can see this is in vertex form, the HK form that I referenced in the previous slide. So now to figure out what is the actual vertex coordinate. 
Remember, I told you that the H value is kind of like the opposite of the sign. It's kind of like opposite of what it looks like. So technically, this is like a double negative, if you get what I'm saying. So now I'm going to rewrite the formula right below. And then we can see that the H value is negative 3 and the K value is negative 1. So that means our vertex is, so let me go back to pen, vertex is H comma K, which is equal to negative 3 comma negative 1. And that completes this problem. Finding the vertex of a parabola is very common in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. So make sure you understand this. Feel free to ask me questions when we see each other next. And now you're wondering to yourself, what is the point of this and what is an application to this? Well, before we get to example four, um, there is a line where you need to fill out and it looks like it's not on mine. So I'm going to rewrite it right here. And you can also write it down. The method of completing the square works when a equals 1. Remember the a value is the number in front, so in this equation a is 1. To solve an equation when a does not equal 1, aka every other number besides 1, we must divide each side by that a value and then complete the square. So remember, if that a value is not 1, you must divide by that number to both sides of the equation and then use that completing the square method that we talked about. So here is our real world application problem for all you gardening nature fans out there. Here's our example. You are planting a flower garden consisting of three square plots surrounded by a one foot border. The total area of this garden and the border is 100 feet squared. What is the side length x of each square plot? So take a moment and just look at the picture. The first thing we need to do is write out the dimensions. We know that the total area is 100 feet squared. That's important. We also know that there is a one foot border. So the dimensions we need to do, basically we need to add all of the side values up. So let's take a look at the length first. We have three x's and we also have a one inch border on both sides. So when we add all those up, like terms, we get three x plus two. Three x's and two ones. And now for the width, we have x as well as a one, in, one foot border on both sides. So the width, I'm just going to write it down here because you can't see it, is going to be x plus 2. So now that's going to be, the t those are going to be the two um, values for our dimensions. And now in order to find the area of a rectangle, we multiply the length and the width. Area equals length times width. Step one, write an equation that you can use to solve the problem. So we're going to have, I'm actually going to bring the A over to the other side. Doesn't really matter. Let's substitute in 3x plus 2 and x plus 2 equals area, which is 100. So please take note. So far, all we've done is figure out the length and the width and plug it into the area formula. Now we need to make a quadratic from this. And we've learned this in the past, last chapter, chapter 8. I'll do it on the side to show you. 3x and 2. I'm going to use the table method. You can use FOIL if you'd like. Multiply the sides and you get 3x squared, 2x, 6x, and 4. Combine like terms on the diagonal like usual, so we get 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. So now rewrite that. Okay, so far so good. We want to bring the 4 over to the other side to make room. So that means we have 3x squared 
plus 8x, leave a little blank space right there, 96. Please take note, that 3 in front is not a 1, so the leading coefficient is not 1. So we just talked about this. When that a value is not 1, you must divide all sides by that number. So divide by 3 on both sides. So that means we now have x squared plus 8 over 3x equals 32. The b value is 8 over 3. We must complete the square now. So I'm going to do this on the side. Remember the little jingle that we've been t talking about, the completing the square. You take the b value, which is 8 over 3, you divide it by 2, and then you square it. So 8 over 3 divided by 2 is the same thing as times 1 half, if you can recall multiplying by the reciprocal and we still need to square it. That is 8 over 6 squared. Reduce that fraction so you get 4 over 3 squared. Last step, share the 2. So we get 4 squared, which is 16, over 3 squared, which is 9. This is the number we're going to be adding to both sides. So plus 16 over 9, plus 16 over 9. Now the good news is we can rewrite this as a perfect square trinomial and that number is 4 thirds which is this number right here. So you always just rewrite that number inside the parentheses. Now on the other side in order to add these guys we need to get the same denominator which is 9 so I'll just save you a step and add it for you. When you add those, you get 3 over 4 divided by 9. Now we must solve the equation by taking the square root of both sides. We're getting towards the end, so stick with me. Plus or minus in front. So x plus 4 thirds equals plus or minus approximately, I'll go to the rounding now, 5.81. Okay. So now we just need to do the plus or minus and then we'll be done. x plus 4 thirds is approximately 5.81 or x plus 4 thirds is approximately negative 5.81. Subtract 4 thirds from both sides and you find out that x must be approximately 4.48 or x is approximately negative 4.14. So go back to the original problem. x needs to be the side length. Does it make sense to have a negative side length? The answer to that question is no, it does not make sense. So rewrite right below, doesn't make sense to have a negative side length. So that means the side length must be this value right here. Okay, that completes this example. Thanks for sticking with me. I know that was a long one. You can rewind, pause, etc. Try the lesson check if you feel comfortable. If not, just make sure you have done day one lesson check, and we will definitely go through this together tomorrow.